It is the beauty for me. The business part. Therapy for me. They are birds accounting for only 2% of all the birds in Kenya, according to Kenya Wildlife Service. Birds of color, which will bring in all the aspects that you can think about. <laughs> Talk about food, security, capital, and the most important, the aesthetic appeal of these birds. We commence our documentary at Tausi Farm in Karen, Nairobi County. Welcome to Tausi Farm, breeding section Karen. I'm uh, Murungi, proprietor and uh, owner of Tausi Farms. Uh, specifically where we are right now, this is a breeding section where we breed all sorts of birds we can get our hands on. Uh, not limited to Tausi, uh, known as peacock, pheasants, uh, guinea falls, we do uh, bantams, uh, budgies uh, and much more here. Here, the farmer specialises in breeding the ornamental birds. After hatching or incubation, the buds are kept in a brooding box for a procedure known as brooding. The box is of technological advancement in such a way that the chicks and ducklings think the mother is still lying on them to give them sufficient heat. But that is not the case. The imported box regulates heat according to the surrounding environment until they are able to depend on themselves in terms of warmth. For incubation of uh, these eggs, eh, uh, it varies with the buds, uh, different buds, uh, different incubation days. For example, peacocks, they, range for, they take 28 days uh, to incubate, hatch, and they take uh, at least two years to fully grow. Uh, other birds include the bantams, which take like normal chicken, like 21 days. We have uh, budgies, 18 days. We have pigeons, same 18 days. We have uh, guinea foals. Varies with the breed of guinea foal from 23 to, from 26 to 28 days. Uh, from the start, eh, once they hatch, we put them in a brooder uh, where we use a heated plate to raise them up to at least a maximum of around uh, two months. Then we can let them out in the cages. Uh, it involves uh, no medication and vaccination starts from as early as they hatch. We introduce things like uh, glucose, we introduce uh, vitamins uh, up to at least a month old where we start no vaccination against uh, deadly diseases like Newcastle, which, is, uh, which applies to a crossbow to all birds. Uh, different birds, different uh, maturity periods. Uh, peacocks, they take two years from hatching. Guinea foals, nine months, uh, bantams, six months, uh, budgies, three months, they, to six months they start breeding. Still at Tausi Farm, there are exotic white and black turkeys. The owner tells us that tourists around the world come to see the black male one because of its ability to puff and lift its huge black wings to unsheathe its pure white interior. A variety of different species at the tender age and a good look at the peachicks and you would not think that they have it in them to become the beautiful peacocks. The focus here is breeding the ornamental birds into the mature magnificence they become deep into the future. That should be a disclaimer. It is not a wonder that you purchase an ego thinking that after growth, a good, beautiful peacock it will be. Around seven kilometers from Kiserian town is Olel Tepe's picnic site and if you have nowhere to visit and appreciate nature and the beautiful birds, then join me for therapy. Here, a huge variety of the exotic ornamental birds in their mature form. In fact, the place is home to international tourism, 
because of the scenic beauty that accompanies it. For attraction purposes to involve so mating, uh, peacocks uh, per se they mature within three years. That's when the trail is uh, fully grown, which, which grows to up to three meters. But uh, molts after around six months, which is uh, once, once the feathers molt, that's off season. Once they are on, that's on season. And the feathers too uh, are used to, for making an ornamental garments uh, like capes. They do uh, bouquets of flowers uh, and applies to different uh, type of birds, different uh, shades of their feathers. The first thing that catches the eye is a beautiful variety of the exotic doves and the peacocks. You cannot fault the tourists for seeking therapeutic aesthetic refuge at the picnic farm. The peacocks are mature now and extremely beautiful. The male peacocks take massive strides showcasing their beauty color collaged feathers and another male has a pure white exterior that is close to perfect. The females on the other hand have a sort of dull black exterior. Uh, talking about peacocks, eh, specifically peacocks uh, and in animal kingdom, eh, uh, males stand out uh, in the animal kingdom compared to females. Still are the Kisarian picnic farm. The owner tells us that apart from the bird's therapeutic aesthetic appeal, schools also visit the place for educational purposes. But at the end of the day, ornamental bird viewing is an excellent leisure activity. We keep birds uh, both for business and fun. Uh, we rear different kind of birds here. We have uh, peacocks, uh, we have uh, pheasants, we have guinea fowls, uh, bantams, uh, we have Cockatiels, we have badges where we keep them for both uh, therapeutic and uh, we also welcome visitors to come visit and learn about different birds, uh, different characteristics of different birds, uh, how they are reared, how they're taking care of them low and because uh, they eventually they add beauty to a compound or uh, its environs. We now switch locations and head to Jack's ornamental poultry farm in Ambakasi. So my name is John, uh, as you can see we are in Jack's ornamental poultry farm, mostly we deal with the ornamental birds, they may be rare, beauty, most of them are because of their ornamental purpose. Here, the first thing that catches the eye is that the farmer rears the birds in a free range system. The ducks, geese, turkeys and the chicken interact peacefully in a safe environment. He has two peacocks, but they have no feathers as we are adapted to seeing. So, where are the feathers, if I may ask? His explanation brings another aspect of designs in the interior. Also brings in a culture aspect away from what many might have not known. Apart from the aesthetic appeal, the owner keeps the birds as a means of preservation and protection. Another thing is uh, for beauty, for example in peacocks, whereby they, they have the, the tail feathers, they train. Mostly, for example, in, uh, the Indians believe having one in a house is a symbol of good luck and prosperity. So they normally, uh, because peacocks normally shed their tails every year, so when they shed their tails, Indians come and buy them. Uh, also, Hindus believe it's a, it's, a, it's a life cycle, the way it, it, it sheds every, every year. It's a belief that uh, it's continuity. Uh, so another thing why mostly we deal with ornamentals, one thing they also, they are wild birds, so they are very disease resistant compared to keeping broilers, layers. You see, the chances of them getting sick are very low compared to a broiler chicken where you have to be extreme, you have to take extreme measures in terms of biosecurity. So, yeah. He owns a nest of golden finches, 
exotic pheasants and grey parrots. The owner says that the government earns significant coin through licensing farmers who venture into rearing ornamental birds. He also says for him it is the passion to protect the birds from the harsh world. We deal with such as peacock, pheasants, uh, some parrot breeds. Some of them are endangered, that's why we keep them. It's a way of trying to protect them. We keep them to protect them, to breed them, so that to increase their population. I also inquired why the ducks, the turkeys and the geese. His answer was enlightening as he said that the broiler hens are frail and not resistant to diseases and the other birds are excellent substitutes, especially the ducks. So another thing why mostly we deal with ornamentals, one thing they also, they are wild birds, so they are very disease resistant compared to keeping broilers, layers. You see, the chances of them getting sick are very low compared to a broiler chicken where you have to be extreme, you have to take extreme measures in terms of biosecurity. He also has electric incubators where he stores eggs of various birds in large scale. The incubator creates the perfect conditions for the eggs to incubate and hatch successfully. The incubator is designed to regulate incubation temperature and humidity at perfect levels. It simply creates the role that the broody hen plays in nature. The owner also urged the government to follow up on people who have set up ornamental farms and educate the mass how to start up aviaries and how to protect and preserve these almost extinct ornamental birds. The government mostly is involved with us is mostly by getting the licenses, but also we will also really like the government to also take part in also trying to create awareness to the kids, such that like uh, they are touring to see these animals, know more about them, know how to t keep them because they are the future of these birds. So the other thing is also trying to bring these rare species is also a bit of a challenge, bringing one in Kenya. You see other countries can be easy, but in Kenya it's a big challenge. But also the government can come in and try to help us uh, young, young growing uh, breeders to be able to source these unique birds so that uh, we, can, we can also be viewing them in our country. Not only you have to fly to UK to see these birds, to South Africa, to U US. You can also see them here live. You see most people when they come to my farm, they just say, I've never seen this bird live. I only see it in Nat Geo. We, in, 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 we can bring them to Kenya. We have had a beautiful day, educative, refreshing, therapeutic, and fun.